Well, hello, welcome everybody um, to our second in a series of uh, a three-part series of tasting the gold medal, medal winning wines from this year's Governor's Cup competition. Uh, as I mentioned last week, normally we do this event on a busy afternoon in March, but unfortunately we weren't able to do it this year. Hopefully we will do it um, later this summer or fall whenever we can and then have everyone out here and taste all the wines at once. But we were able to uh, win seven gold medals this past year and we decided to break it up and taste them all over three weekends, three Saturdays. Uh, Ivy Haynes, our marketing manager, came up with this idea and Ivy is the one uh, who's coordinating the sales and shipping of these wines. Yeah. And I think that we still have uh, one, these wines are available on, for one more day? They're actually, yeah. These so, two? Yes, so the 16 and 17 Meritage will be available um, until tomorrow night, so Sunday night. Um, after that, they're going to only be released in the future or in the, the next, when we, when, when we run Right season. now we're currently doing the, the 15 Meritage is the current release. and. Mm -hmm. And the 16 will be out probably, uh, I think later this summer, this fall is when we will we'll release the 16, uh, maybe even a little bit sooner than that if I recall the inventory. And then 17 won't be for quite a while, probably another year or so. So, yeah. um, so if you really like the wines, definitely order them by tomorrow night and they are 20% off um, on the website or at Wineworks Extended, which is open one to six today and tomorrow and then during the week, three to six. And they can still do the seven pack Yep, and the seven gold medal pack is available um, until next Sunday. So, order that too. Great, thanks Ivy. Yeah. And uh, so Ivy's gonna be on her computer if anyone has questions. Last week Ivy was on the other side of the computer, but I thought it'd be easier if she's here and she's might, uh, we have some questions that came in since last week that she's gonna ask me as well, so uh, I stay on track. Yeah. Um, so, having said that, we're gonna taste today the the 2016 Meritage and 2017 Meritage side by side. Um, uh, I've, uh, just for people who weren't here last week, a little bit of background, I've been making wine in Virginia for 25 years. Uh, started making wine, learned wine making in France in the early 90s, 1990 is actually when I started in France. And I arrived in Virginia in 95. And um, so, I am the winemaker and, and managing partner here at Michael Schaap's Wine Works. Uh, we have a location here on Harris Creek and then the location in Charleston on Avon Street. And then we also are the owners of Shenandoah Vineyards uh, in Edinburgh, Virginia as well. Uh, and as well as Maison Schaap's in Marcel, France. So um, we do a lot of different wines at uh, the two different wineries and uh, we have vineyards that we manage, lease and manage and own at Shenandoah as well, uh, scattered throughout the state. And so a lot of these wines are blends from our different vineyard sites. Um, so we're gonna talk about the meritage and uh, the concept behind these wines. Uh, if you're not familiar with the term meritage, it was started in the late 80s, I believe around 88. Uh, the Meritage Association was formed and it's really uh, an association that was uh, established to kind of promote the Bordeaux blend that was very popular in California and um, really wanted to come up with a, they wanted to come up with a, a branding of that style and created the Meritage Association which we've been a member of since 2007 when I made the first, my first uh, Meritage under my label. I've been making wines under the Michael Schaps label since 2000 so uh, it's about 20 years in Virginia as uh, the Michael Schaap's wines in, in Virginia. Yeah. Um, and so in 2007, when I started here at this facility, when we moved the brand here, I uh, decided to, to start a Meritage blend. And the concept was to really make the highest quality wine that uh, really is a, a creative blend of the different varieties that we were bottling as a single varietal and taking our best barrels and coming up with a a blend that really was a nice reflection of the vintage that uh, was our best wine of the vintage. And so there's no recipe here, it's really a reflection of the vintage. And uh, though I have a style that I like and a style that I aim for, there's, uh, there's nothing set in stone. So uh, really in certain years it might be more Merlot based, might be more Petit Verdot. Uh, I try to, between Merlot, Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot, use those as the base mm -hmm. of the blend and then uh, mixing a little Cabernet Sauvignon and Malbec as well. 
uh, and those are the varieties in the Meritage Association is, uh, has to be uh, two or more of the noble Bordeaux varieties in the mix. And I believe it can't be more than 90% of, of one variety, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been fortunate. We have some really great vineyard sites uh, that we work with that have gone into the Meritage blend over the years. And referring to the Governor's Cup competition here in Virginia, uh, this Meritage, our Meritage is pretty, pretty consistent as a gold medal winner now, I think, uh, last four or five years straight, at least, uh, it's been winning a gold medal, I think starting at least with the 2014, I'm sure, through the 17, we've had a gold medal <coughs> with our Meritage blend. Turn, down, <laughs> turn off heat. That's okay. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so as I was saying, the, the objective is to make a wine that is going to be, uh, have ageability, uh, show the, the highlight of the best of these varieties uh, from that vintage. And so I like, as I mentioned, Merlot is, is I think, is a really uh, underrated grape here in Virginia. Um, when it, we have a good season, Merlot is fantastic, one of my favorite grapes to work with. It kind of offers everything between uh, nice, rich fruit, some good tannin, uh, some you know structure and you know it really it for me is uh, more the the base of the blend and I try to work through that and add in the other elements so I always start with Merlot and some years when the Merlot is not up to you know the level that I want uh, I'll turn to Petit Verdot as the main variety. Uh, Petit Verdot uh, is pretty intense here in Virginia uh, the, from our vineyards it's very ripe rich dense has some really good structure, tannin, has really great acidity that I like in the blend, but it can be overpowering if we have too much of it. So um, it really depends on the vintage. It's interesting in these two blends, you'll, we'll taste later, uh, the, the amount of Petit Verdot differs, but the one with less actually I think shows more Petit Verdot because it's such a big vintage. Um, so then the Cabernet Franc is uh, also a great variety here in Virginia. We talked about it last week. Uh, I like adding the Cabernet Franc in, in different uh, amounts depending, again, on the maturity, the ripeness of the fruit, and how it, it blends in with the other varieties. But those are the main three. Cabernet Sauvignon uh, varies from not much more than 10% in any vintage, same with Malbec. Uh, they're less consistent in, right here in our area in Central Virginia. Uh, the heavy clay soils here uh, produce a style that's a little different. Uh, more elegant style of Cabernet Sauvignon. Doesn't have the big structure you might find uh, on the West Coast. Um, and so I use it more as a nice nuance, some elegance, a different fruit profile. The mild back is great. It adds a lot of nice acidity, uh, some savory notes. Uh, it's really soft. Um, and so it really has a nice component as well. But again, too much Malbec really is not my style. It doesn't really create the style one that I like. So how do I come up with the, the, the blends? Um, we make the wines um, separately and from each vineyard uh, that we have. We might have several sites of Cab Franc or Petit Verdot. Everything's fermented and, and, and separate. And I forgot to mention, we're in a different location yeah, today. <laughs> so we actually, before I go on to that, we, uh, last week we were in the tank room and there was a lot of echo and some people mentioned it was kind of hard to hear. So we moved the, uh, the today's tasting to the, uh, the red barrel room where my wines are being aged. So you know, right behind me we have some Petit Verdot from this past uh, harvest that's aging. Um, so the wines are, are fermented and aged in, in barrels separately and then uh, towards the beginning of summer the following year is when I really start to go through all the barrels, take notes and you know kind of uh, make comments and kind of score each barrel, how, what I think about them, and, um, and from those notes uh, I start to piece together some ideas on what the blend should look like based on the quality of the wine, the vintage.